Good to have you here for our potpourri. For those of you that are online, just a quick little reminder that if you want to make a comment or something of that nature, or just wave your hand at us, feel free to unmute yourself and start talking, or you can raise your hand. We'll watch the wall, and we'll be able to see what's going on. But we do want you to feel involved with the class and not just off there on the in the wall into Zoom land. So please feel free to be part of it. Thank you so much for being here. Again, you've already heard this thing, but just remember, lunch is the first week of March. Other than that, we're ready to get going. And Janice, it's all yours. Hold it. Thrilled to have all of you here today. I know it's a Wednesday, so it's a little bit unusual, but then I was thinking, well, what if somebody couldn't do a Tuesday? And so I'm excited that we get to go over some things that maybe you have heard or seen before, but we get to go a little bit more in depth in this potpourri section. So thank you to Kim Ferguson for that. Um, I appreciate that. So, so today we're just going to jump right in so that we can use our time wisely. We're Here's my title, Thrive with Five All-Time Super Duper Techniques. Now you're going to say, but Janice, I've seen some of these and I'm going, but yes, they go over and over again. They're helping you, but we're going to go even a little bit more in depth today. Uh, and I know that you're going to love it. Well, this doesn't want to go again. Okay, so touch I'll just screen. touch the screen and then we'll then we'll do it. Okay, perfect. Um, and so we've already talked about breaking uh, three from anxiety. We're recognizing these are just we're just reviewing for just a second. We're just reviewing who we really are, that we're divine and that we are whole. And we need to remember that that we're whole because sometimes earth life changes that perspective but there are things that get in the way that bog us down whether it's anxiety whether it's depression whether your child has just yelled at you whether there's a death lots of things that overwhelm us but we're capable we're honestly capable of thriving we can we can. And, and I just figure, golly, if I can get rid of some of the baggage that I carried, I'm going to have you guys shut that door for me, if you would. Just shut the door. Thank you so much. Um, <clears throat> if I can get rid of baggage that I had, and it was a little bit hard to get rid of, then I figure you could get rid of some baggage that you have. So just by raise of hand, does anybody have anything that they're kind of struggling with or they just don't like and that they would like to get rid of a little baggage? Raise your hand. Just a we have one person at home raising their hand. Go one, ahead, Barbara. One person is raising. Yeah. Go ahead, Barbara. I, I would. Is anybody bold enough to say what we're struggling with? You don't have to. Oh, yes, over here. Go ahead, Barbara. Oh, oh Barbara's got one. She's unmuted. Well, you said raise your hand. I got baggage, but I, I'm not sure I want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's honest. But the answer is yes. We all have something, but Gwen's willing to. I know I'm daring. I struggle with old age and impending death. I'm wondering why I'm still here. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, and, and we've never been to this stage before. Or we were here 10 years ago, but now we're 10 years older. And I'm going, ah, it doesn't get any easier, does it? So it doesn't matter whether it's yourself or death or your children or loneliness or whatever the case may be. We're, we have challenges, but we do not have to succumb to the negativity of the challenge that we have. And so yesterday, we didn't have enough time to do meridian tapping. And of anything that I've taught you thus far, this is, in my opinion, the Mercedes Benz of things that could help you. I think I told you uh, a while back that I was uh, counseling in DC. There was a, a, a vet from Afghanistan coming in because there'd been a lot of trauma lots of shooting, lots of killing, all sorts of things happening. And then his wife up and left him and took two kids. And so he was 
he was traumatized and then double tra traumatized. And so we were doing intervention techniques. And one of them is eye movement desensitization reprocessing. That's EMDR. I'll talk a little bit more about that next week. Um, and, and that is a very effective technique. But with that, we did meridian tapping with him. And he would come in after about a month and he said, Janice, the EMDR is helping with the core issues that I really need, need to address. And he said, but your meridian tapping, and they call it EFT, emotional freedom technique, but I call it meridian tapping. The, the meridian tapping saves me at 2 a.m. when I'm having flashbacks of all those bombs, of seeing all the people and all of that. And it just really calmed him down. So I know that it's going to help us and we're going to do it today. So just a, a quick thing. Here we are. Remember, we have a, it's coming from the Chinese, over 3,000 years old. We've got 12 meridians in our body. Okay, here's a karate chop point from here, from the bottom of your pinky area, clear to your wrist. And we're going to tap on that. Either side is fine. Okay. And then when we tap, start tapping on our body, um, it's five to seven times. Now you notice the fellow that was tapping and we're going to redo that again because I thought it was so effective, but first we're going to do our own two full times of doing meridian tapping. Um, <clears throat> he, the, the fellow did not tap with his, uh, on the crown first. You notice he went right to the brow. I don't know. I've always been taught that you go from the top down. I don't think it matters. I think the body just wants to get better and it wants to get a message to the brain, okay? And so... Hi everyone, this is Nick Ortner. Okay, here's our meridian tapping. We're gonna rate the distress of whatever the issue is from zero to 10. And, and we are going to, yeah, zero is no disturbance and 10 is the highest disturbance ever. We are going to do this two full rounds and then we'll evaluate. So do I have a guinea pig? Oh, excuse me, a client. Oh, excuse me. One of you that would be willing to come up here. Oh, David. Exactly. I knew, I knew you wanted to come <clears throat> and we're going to tap. But we're gonna, um, but we're gonna all kind of help because we we we, we we may have the same thing that David does, but we're gonna learn through you. Uh, so, what can you tell me? Is there any kind of an issue that that you would like to address? Anxiety or no, nothing? nothing. Morning, freeze. Got it. Exactly. You lie a lot too. You lie a lot too. Well, I mean, can you be vulnerable enough to give us just one small thing that maybe? Sadness, depression, so uh, uh, depression. depression. Okay, a little, a little small, a little small feelings of depression. Very small. Okay, I will say one thing. At this time of year, February is the worst month for suicides. Did you know? <laughs> day is the worst day. Oh, you tell. Twenty ninth of February, leap oh. year, because of that change. That is one of the highest. Oh, interesting. Days of suicide. Uh, interesting, but, but it really is true. Yeah, I mean, we're pumping up for Christmas, and so we're all okay because of the lights and the trees. Then that goes away, and we go, oh my gosh, but we've got Valentine's. And then it kind of just goes downhill, and then people start to get sick. Have you noticed how many people are getting sick right now? There they are. They just whoosh. It's just really hard. Yeah, <laughs> really. Okay, so again, we're a setup statement. Even though I... I'm feeling, I'm feeling a little depressed. I'm feeling a little depressed. I deeply and completely love and accept myself. We're going to say that three times. Uh, and then I forgive myself and others who have harmed me. Recognizing that what you're doing is telling the brain that you know there's a problem and you're going to tap on these meridian points. Okay. And, and you... It, it's okay. You can do it kind of to help him, but you may again have a little bit of down too. This is the time of year. If you have seasonal affected disorder, and I kind of tend to have that, it gets dreary. It gets blue. So I get myself a light bar. Does anybody know what a light bar is? Get myself a little light bar. I put it right by my computer. I turn that darn thing on if I'm feeling blue and I take D3. Taking D3 is a sunshine vitamin that will boost and elevate your mood. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Okay, ready, set. Come on. Yeah. Start where are we started. Oh, we are going so to do the karate chop. Are we going head toe? We always do the karate chop point first. And we this is for our whole setup statement. 
the whole setup statement. We're just doing that. And then at the at, after we say, I forgive myself and others who have harmed me, then we will start and maybe I will go back up because we will go at the top of the head and go down. Ending, ending with, if you remember what we did yesterday, we did the hand. <clears throat> remember, you turn it toward the thumb is going up to the ceiling and it is the it is not your nail. It is not your pad. It is right there by the bottom of your nail, right there. That That is the meridian point. Okay. And then I'm going to show you a picture of what we learned yesterday because I have those with us. Okay. Uh, ready, set, go. Even though I feel so slightly depressed, I, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Even though I feel slightly depressed, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Stop just a second. We need let's you and I say it together and then would you say we'll say it again? Yes, as a group, because we need to. Okay. I'll, I'll let you do it and then I'll echo with it. Okay. Okay. Even though I am slightly depressed, I even no, no. Sorry. even though I am slightly depressed, I am slightly depressed. I deeply think and completely love and accept myself. I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Even though I am slightly depressed. Even though I am slightly depressed. I, I feel slightly I depressed. Think, okay. I deeply and completely love and accept myself. I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Stop just one second. The reason why, if we, maybe we say I feel as opposed to I am. If you say I am, your brain's going to go, I'm going to help him okay. be more depressed. If you say I feel, your brain's going to go, oh, there's hope. I can help him. All right. Okay. Third time. Third time. Even though I feel slightly depressed. Even though I feel slightly depressed. I deeply and completely love and accept myself. I deeply and completely love and accept myself. I forgive myself and others who have harmed me. I forgive myself and others who have harmed me. And then, oh, what what were you? Were you on a zero to 10 scale? You were a one? Yeah. So you're really not very depressed. No, not at all. Oh, gee. Okay, I'm going to say I'm like a six or a seven, okay? So I don't know where you are, but find your number, all right? And then you just say, letting go. Letting go. Yeah. Or do you remember what did the guy say yesterday? He said something. Noticing. You you don't have to say a lot. You can say letting go of this pain. Just follow me. Letting go of this feeling, of this pain. Eyebrows. When I'm ready. If I'm ready. I don't have to. I can keep it. I can keep it. And stay depressed. But I don't have to. I could let this go. Feel it a little bit better under the nose. When I'm ready. If I'm ready. Uh, this is your bra strap now. Letting go. <laughs> and uh, wrists. Letting go. Bringing in peace. Okay, now meridians, side of your thumb. Now your second finger, third finger, fourth finger, fifth finger. And between four and five, there's a vein there. Tap that. Okay, uh, deep breath. And hold, allowing the oxygen to come into your brain. And release straw breath. Very slowly. Okay, thank you. How was cool. How was that? It was cool. Okay, okay. I want to, now, if, if a person was doing that, that's just one time. We want to do it twice. So shall we do another one? Uh, shall we do the pain in your shoulder? Is it your left shoulder? Okay. Even though I have pain in my left shoulder, even though I have pain in my left shoulder, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. I have a lot of pain in my shoulder. 
And it's been hurting a long time. Even with that, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. I don't know what to do. I've got this pain and I can't get rid of it. In my shoulder. Even with that, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. I forgive myself and others who have harmed me. Okay, tapping top of the head, letting go. Eyebrows of all this pain, of all this hurt, of all this ache, when I'm ready, under your eyes. If I'm ready, under your chin. I don't have to, but I could let this go. Collarbone. Side of your arms, bra strap. Wrist, letting go. Bringing in hope, bringing in light, bringing in peace. Okay, now side. Remember, it's not your, not your nail and not your pad. It's your thumb. Now we're going to second finger, third finger, fourth finger, and lastly, fifth finger. Okay. Deep breath. And release. Now, again, we've only done it one time, and usually you do two full rounds, but did you have a scale, when Zero to ten. How, how much is it, has it been hurting you? Nine. Okay. Ken, I, I, again, we've only done it halfway, but is it a little bit less or not? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. And, and, and I understand that. So what the deal is, is you go, oh, it's at a nine. Then you do two full rounds of it, and then you evaluate. Where am I? It could go from a nine to an eight, could stay the same, could go down to a seven. You let the body do what it wants, but just ju the body will tell you. It's not going to lie if you can read it. Some people don't know how to read their body. But <clears throat> and if it is not a zero to a one, then you go do it again. You may do it five times. Uh, and it's OK. The purpose is to get it from whatever that high level is. See, he was cheating. He's so healthy. We weren't. We're not worried about that, but but some of us some of us have a few things that we struggle with, you know. Maybe somebody yelled at us, and it just really was disheartening. And how do we handle that? You can quickly get rid of that. Just one second. So, just one quick story. So, here's this lady. I think I don't know if I've told you this before. Uh, she's a therapist like me. We're in Washington D.C. and uh, we're we're in the office. And she just happened to mention to me that her son had gotten so upset. Did I tell you this already? He'd gotten so upset because the coach had gotten mad at one of the of one of the teammates. I don't know. He had done something that was just really silly. But the coach punished the whole team and made them run a mile. And the son was very, very angry that the coach did that because they did nothing wrong. He should have punished the kid, but not the whole team. And so he came into home and he was livid. And mother, who is a therapist, she goes, could you just tap with me? And she didn't do any of the setup statement, none of the setup statement. She just goes, you know, goes like this. And, you know, just she would just guide him and, and tell him. And, and he just kept spewing and spewing what happened and what he did and how it was so hard to run that mile and all of this. And at the end of about four or five minutes, he finally goes, oh, mother. I'm just fine. The coach is a jerk. I'm going to go play basketball. <laughs> and he just, you know what I mean? Now, did he, he, did he have emotion? Was it intense? Was he able to release that mo emotion in a healthy way? Yes. And then he went on. Okay. One other quick story. And I did say this to someone last night. One of my daughters was struggling with something in her marriage, and it was really hard for her, and I love her, and I got in, in, my, in my mind involved. Anyway, it was, it was tough, and we were at a different place. We weren't at home. It was nighttime, 
David was sleeping. I was in the same bed as him. I couldn't sleep. I was so distraught over everything that had happened. And I thought, what am I going to do? I can't do meridian tapping. This is when I didn't know if I believed it or not. Um, I can't do meridian tapping, but I can't go to bed and I need my rest. So I knew that you could visualize it in your mind. Your mind is amazing. And so that is exactly what I did because I couldn't go like this. I'd wake David up. That's not fair. And so I visualized in my mind the problem going through me, me doing the karate chop point and then me doing all of the different meridian points. Now, it took more than two times for me. It took three times, maybe four times, but then I was able, my body would allow me to calm, it would calm itself down and I was able to sleep. Yes. It's uh, you using it instead of counting sheep, I guess. That um, my question was, uh, how does this stimulate? And the, do you know how it works? Like why, why doing these things makes it better? Well, let's just look here at what we're tapping. Okay, so look at this chart. I showed this so briefly, but I'm so glad we get to do it again today. You have the karate chop point, which is the one we keep doing as we do the setup statement. That is your small intestine meridian. Some of the feelings that you have in, it, in relation to it are shock, sadness, unappreciated nervousness. And so when you start to tap, it sends a message then from the small intestines meridian up to your brain. It's literally going up into the brain. And you know, the fight, flight, or freeze response, when you do this kind of a thing, or I've taught you one more, we're going to do this a little bit more today, you know, the infinity sign, there are some things you can do that will just, mm, I'm going to say diffuse and calm down the brain. And so that is, I don't know if I answered your question exactly, but you're sending a message. Do I know exactly every single neuron what happens? No. No, but this has been going on for 3,000 years. Look at this. The top of the head, 100 meeting point. I don't even know what that is, but it's the inner critic, the lack of focus, the hamster on the wheel. You keep, if you can't quit thinking about something, oh, I think I need to do that today. Well, then you could get more insight, more intuition. You know, it's helping you. And people, uh, the eyebrow is your bladder area where there's trauma or hurt or sadness or restlessness, and we want to obtain inner peace. And so that's helping. All of this is just giving, it's like saying a person's up in space and they're going, Houston, Houston, help me. That's exactly what you're doing to your brain. You're saying, brain, help me get on board with what I'm dealing with to help me. And I like that. Um, I want to just take us a little bit more time. I, uh, side of the eye is the gallbladder, rage or anger or resentment or fear. I mean, these are normal emotions. You know that, but we don't have to keep them. And let's say you're really not tapping. Let's say you didn't even do a, a statement. Let's say you're just feeling a little bit down. Could you just sort of tap? Of course you could. In fact, later on, I'm going to show tomorrow or next week, this one guy literally is doing tapping like he's just going like this. Yeah, he's just going and it's just sort of he goes, it's a sneaky way. Nobody knows what you're doing. And you are tapping in to your system and getting it more into alignment. Yes. I'm just going to back up what you just said. I went over um, between classes. I was a little late for this. I apologize. But to the car dealers, car repair across the street because my car won't let any gas go in the gas pump. Hmm. And then I already gone to another place yesterday, the dealership, and they done spark plugs and stuff. I said, don't put new spark plugs. And they got very happy with me hmm. and, and, you know, not very useful. And I just mentally tapped while I was standing there. And then when I left, I thought it was kind of amusing and funny, not yeah. like, oh, my life's over now. 
Like they had the wrong car. Right. uh, They had the wrong address. They had the wrong phone. All these things, you know, that you would think Mm. since I had told them those things, they would know. But that was, I used it like 20 minutes ago and I feel fine. And I felt fine as I crossed the street. So it's, my point is it's immediate gratification. Thank you. Thank you. So it's like, remember the volcano because we do it every single time. You're in that buildup phase of the volcano. You could get into heavy duty frustration with what you just said, you know, heavy duty or, or whatever it is, but what we have the capacity now, we have the capacity to calm ourselves down. And I guess if we were 15, maybe it would be okay to blow up, maybe, but we're not. And frankly, it's not worth your energy. I mean, don't, don't you kind of want a lot of energy now? And you go, I know, I only want to entertain in my body things that are positive. If my friend is a toxic friend, I can care about her, but I'm not going to have her as my best friend because I only need positive. I all, you know, what, what brings that to you? Let's make it so that we're okay. A little bit more here, just because I think it's, I hope it's interesting to you. Under your eye is your stomach. Anxiety, worry, nervousness. Uh, I could say loneliness would probably be there. Under the nose, governing meridian embarrassment, shame, grief. Uh, You know, we've got that funeral of a person, so there's a lot of grief, and we don't want to keep that inside. We want to get rid of that um, as much as we can. Under your chin, shyness, confusion, embarrassment, going into clarity. Collarbone is your kidneys and adrenals, feeling stuck, general stress. Okay. I know that somebody will say, if you're wanting and needing extra energy, you've probably heard this. It's right here. It's right here in your center. Uh huh. You just give that, and it just gives you that little bit of extra boost. Why not give the body what it needs? Underarm, spleen, meridian, guilt, obsessive, worry, hopelessness. Um, any comment on that? I just think it's interesting. I think it's fascinating. Now, I, you saw this yesterday, but I wanted you to take a gander of it again. Your feet and your hands. Now, you can say this is a bunch of baloney, but it's been around for thousands of years also. That, that your hands and your feet are connected to all of you and that they can literally help you in certain areas. And so you can go in, okay, I just want to look for you, Gwen. Right shoulder, right here. It is on your left hand. Oh, left shoulder. Then that would mean that it would be on your other hand. It'd be on your other hand. So you can just, you can kind of flip it. Yeah. And so you could be massaging that. Why not? Oh, you, uh, the point is right here. Oh, okay. The point is right here. So do it on the other hand. This is your left hand. So, yeah. This is your left hand, and you you said it is your left shoulder, correct? So they're opposite, they cross. Yeah, and so you would do that. Anybody else struggling with anything physical or organ-wise or or whatever? Okay, so there's, I was going to tell you, I don't, I'm not going to force anybody to do this, but if after when we're done today, I have all these different oils and I have a carrier oil, Um, you're welcome to come up. I'm not espousing any one particular brand of oil. What I am saying is oils carry a high frequency. When you are feeling depressed, are you feeling high frequency or low frequency? Low. Yeah, low. When you're angry, are you feeling a high frequency or a low frequency? It's a high one. It's a high one, not a, not a healthy one if you're really up there, but it's high. And so oils have this frequency that is positive and it is always a high positive one. And so I'm just going to, what is this? This just smells so good. Oh, wow. I tra- Well, just don't drop this. No, I'm not going to give it to you. Okay. This one is rose and rose is so expensive. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. We're going to go for lemon and we'll pass it around because most people are not. So each of these has its own. You can actually Google the frequency it is. You're welcome to unscrew it and smell it. 
the, what, the way you use these oils, you literally can just put a drop or two of carrier oil. And there's coconut oil and all avocado oil and different things. Then you put a drop of the oil on. You can rub it with your hands and then you just cup it like this and you just smell it. You breathe it in and let it seep into your brain. You're, you're literally putting that higher little bit of energy. You're helping yourself. Okay. Yes, that, that that even works with physical pain. For example, I had a cancer removed here on my neck and they were giving me radiation and the lady noticed me and she says, what's going on? And I told her, you know, what I was doing and I begged the doctor not to give me that last week, but she had um, a little uh, thing of lavender. Yes. And she says, it's almost empty. I'm going to give it to you. Yes. Within less than 24 hours, the soreness was out. It was unbelievable. I wouldn't have believed it yes. if I had known it. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, lavender is very much a calmer. It's a mm -hmm. soother and a calmer. If you're feeling a little bit sluggish or or or, or a little bit depressed or whatever, you'll want to go to something like peppermint or eucalyptus that will that will sort of energize you. And so these oils have their own properties. Again, I'm not espousing which one is the right one or the wrong one. I'm just saying that they have a high energy. And what and we need that. Why not use that? Um, so this is something to look into. And here I I put this in here. This is from doTERRA, but again, I'm not espousing one, but let's just look over at the shoulders. Um Okay, a Gwen for you, Aroma Touch, Wintergreen, Lemongrass, Deep Blue, um, Past Tense, and Birch. If I have some of these. If one of these and you wanted to try one, you're welcome to. Um, I know somebody that just had a gallbladder removed. Look over here. Gallbladder, they would use geranium, rosemary, lavender, heliochrysum, and citrus oils. So again, it's only a teeny bit. You don't just, you don't just, no, no, no. It's uno, one drop, one drop. In your carrier oil, your carrier oil, depending upon how big of a surface, maybe two drops, maybe three. Uh, but I think it's worth talking about because we have the ability. I know a lot of people diffuse their oils. They'll put a drop or two in their water diffuser and let it go through their kitchen or through their bedroom. Okay, now we've talked about this, so I'm gonna, but I'm gonna briefly go through it because I want to get to a, a couple more. You know that mindfulness is one of my favorites because I talk about it every time. Uh, it's because it's amazing. We have the ability to take care of ourselves, and one of the ways to calm ourselves down is to not be afraid of whatever the emotion is. We just notice it's happening. Maybe it's sadness and we just notice it. We acknowledge, oh, I'm feeling sad. No judgment. Well, Janice, you're feeling sad. My friend, well, well you know, what, what can you do about it? You know, I do a little worry box thing. Well, what can you do about it? Here's a sadness is the problem. What can I do about it? What positive thing? And then I just allow it to go up in the cloud or I can put it in the cupboard of my mind and shut it. I'm very, very gentle, very gentle with me, recognizing that I have an adult Janice. I have a teenage Janice that sometimes it acts out a tiny bit. And I have a little child Janice that sometimes has needs. And that's okay. It's okay for us to be all of that because that's who we are. That's what has made us. Uh, we are going to choose to be in the present moment, meaning that we go 15 to 20 miles an hour, okay? Now, if you need to get something really done, you're going to go 60. But, but for the normal day-to-day, -day, you're to be joyous. That's your job. Your job is to be joyous right now with what is in front of you. And you can do that by being PPG, positive, present, and grateful. It's a conscious choice. You can choose to be miserable, but my suggestion is set the timer, choose to be miserable for five minutes. After the timer goes in five minutes, then you're done. Okay, now what? Now what can I do to help myself? Glad, one thing you're grateful for, one thing you learned, one thing you accomplished today, even if it's just putting your clothes on, that's good enough. And the D, delight. I can't tell you, it was yesterday morning as I was getting ready to come here. Um, 
I don't know why, but there was these flock of birds and they were chirping up a storm. And I did not have the windows open, but I heard them. And it was the most delightful thing ever because I love nature and I love birds and I love all of that. And so I thought, wow, uh, that lifts me up as much as as much as a, 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 a oil. It just it just automatically lifts my brain to a higher level. Um, deep breath and ha havening touch. So we've already talked about that. There's our PPG. There's our GLAD. Um, I'd like you to say these with me one more time again, because I feel that as we choose to be PPG and we choose to continually have in our mind statements, whether it's a mantra or a positive affirmation, I'd whatever you want, but we have them daily in our mind. Can you say this with me again? Ready, set, go. I am lovable and capable. I trust and respect myself. I fully accept and believe in myself. I love myself just the way I am. Now stop. I know that sometimes we don't. I know that sometimes I don't love myself just the way I am. I'm wishing that I was better or could do more or, you know, blah, blah, blah. But again, it's that same thing. We're changing the negative in Meridian Tapping. We're changing that negative going into the positive when we're ready. Okay, next one. I believe in my ability to succeed. I deserve respect from others. I easily accept compliments. The more I love myself, the more I am able to love others. I release all drama from my life and get energy from peace. Any comment on positive affirmations or mantras or remember the havening touch we talked about we haven't talked about that for a minute remember how uh kate pruitt was talking about you you're rubbing your hands do you remember that and she told you all these different things that you could do to nourish yourself yeah any any comment on that yes and when i was about 11 years old uh, my mother had recently died, and I was depressed and really feeling sorry for myself. And I was just, I didn't think I could get any worse feeling than I was at that moment. So I decided I was going to go deep into it. I was going to be as miserable as I could. Mm -hmm. And so I worked on it, yeah. and I was there, deep in the pit. And then I got bored, and I thought, this is ridiculous. And I tried to be miserable again, and I couldn't do it. And I thought, this is really ridiculous. I, I'm miserable. I know I'm miserable. I've got to be able to do this again. And I couldn't. And then I started laughing. You know, when you go into it and you examine it, yeah. you really realize that you're just feeling sorry for yourself. Yeah. And did you and have a right to point? feel? Did you have a right to feel sorry for yourself? You bet you did. No, because I was alive and I was well. Right, but you did have a right. It was to a feel. temporary thing. It was a temporary thing, but I mean, it did hurt, right? Yes. It was horrific. Yeah. Okay, so so pain happens. We get to deal with it and it sucks. But but, but you're when exactly you look right. Look it in the face. Mm. You know, don't run away from it. Look at it. Thank Examine you. Examine it. Yeah. And Thank then you. everything changes. Perfect. Tomorrow when we talk about panic attacks, because people get so nervous about that. Uh I I, I mean not tomorrow, but next Tuesday. Um yeah, addressing it and facing it head on instead of running away from the pain is the antidote. It is the key. It is the key. Uh, Gwen has a comment. So it's going up in the mountains. Say that again. When you go up into the mountains by yourself, 
it's amazing what nature can do. Absolutely amazing. Exactly. Yeah, I had a terrible, terrible bout with near suicide at one time. And I went up into the mountains and I could not believe the difference. Yeah. I, what is it about it? Is it because the leaves are green? Is it because the water is running by? Is it because the rocks are alive? I mean, maybe you don't believe that, but I do. I mean, I, everything is everything is, is joyous. Okay, I may not be right at that moment, but everything else is. And it just sort of, it's like the oils. It just will lift you up. There's a higher vibration. I wanted to do deep breathing again one more time because you notice it is in everything. If you're needing to take care of yourself, it is about your breath. When we breathe, we don't shallow breath. Well, you can do whatever you want, but generally speaking, you don't shallow breathe because your, your brain needs more than that. So you are going to deep breathe from your diaphragm. It's like you're an opera singer, okay? You're an opera singer and you are going to breathe out and so your stomach is going to protrude. Nobody's looking. Just let yourself get the breath you need. Then we're going to hold it. We hold it to let that oxygen stay where it needs to be, right here. Okay? And then we have a straw breath. They say that that straw breath, very slowly, again, allows things to regulate and get to your brain faster. You'll see this if you Google it. There's 20 different ways to do it. It doesn't have to be 777. I just like the number. It could be 4, 6, and 10. Uh, but let's do 777 today. Ready, set, go, deep breath in. Keep going. Hold. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and release straw breath. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. And it should be all out. We're going to do it one more time. Ready, set, go in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hold. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And release, straw breath. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Wow. Any comment on that? Yes. Are a lot of words starting to embrace without the release? Is it that microphone? Right? Or is it microphone? Oh, my bottom lips started quivering on that release. Is that a bad thing or a good thing? What? How was it for you? I never had my bottom lip quiver like that. It was like, uh, I don't know. I, I will say, well, I, I don't, I can't answer that. But what I can answer is I have many people say, Janice, because we do it for two minutes. You do deep breathing for two full minutes. And they'll say, Janice, I'm getting dizzy. I'm lightheaded. And my, my question is, why? They go, I don't know. Do you guys know why? Why would a person get lightheaded if they did deep breathing for two minutes? They're breathing too fast. They could be do breathing too fast, but it also could be that your brain is so hungry for oxygen, you have deprived it that all of a sudden you're giving it the oxygen it needs. And so it's going to go, oh, I'm not used to this. Yes. It's flooded. Uh, we teach runners to uh, breathe through their belly button. Mm. Because when they, especially long distance runners, when they get finished with the run, many times they're they're gasping because they did that last uh, 100 meter run and you know hard run and they're just gasping for me breathe through your belly button that's right stand tall breathe through your belly button slow deep breaths it, the biggest thing is slow yes long slow breathing lsb <laughs> so, yeah. Thank you so much. I just would like everybody to put their hand on their stomach, please. And we're just going to practice. Nobody's looking at you. Okay. Deb, we're just going to practice diaphragmic breathing, meaning when we go to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, at seven, you should be clear out. Um, females, it's like you're pregnant. Okay. Men, it's like you're pregnant, even though you're not. Okay. We're not. Okay. Ready, set, go. Breathe. Right in the. And then we release it, and, and it should be able to go back in. Do you understand? 
Okay, let's try it one more time. Out, breathe. Can you feel it coming out? And then release it. You can tell if it's shallow breathing because it's right here. <laughs> it's like you're panting. Not healthy. Okay, we don't need to pant. Dogs pant. You don't. Okay. Okay, let's go to the next one. We are not going to stop on this, but I just wanted to say you can do visualizations anytime you want. Anytime you want. You can take yourself to the beach. You can take yourself to the forest. Uh, you know, so to say, oh, I'm stuck in my house because I'm sick. I can't do anything for myself. Not true. Not true. Take yourself anywhere you want. And if you need to study it because you need a visual, go to YouTube, get yourself a beach, look at it, you know, enjoy it. And then you go visualize it when you're making some dinner, when you're um, sitting, when you're whatever you're doing. Visualizations are very, very, very lovely. If I have a client and they are really, really mm, dysregulated, if I can get them to visualize something that is beautiful and take your mind, take their mind there, we call it finding a safe place and going there. If you can find a safe place in your mind, whether it's a beach, whether it's a forest, whatever it is, then your body will calm down. It will regulate. You will feel safe. You will feel secure and you'll be able to feel better. Feel better. So I love visualizations. Make sure you do that. Uh, balancing life. I can't stress enough that we want to not just do one thing all day long. Okay. And sometimes we do that. But generally speaking, what are you doing in a spiritual level to heighten you? What does that look like for you? Is it prayers? Is it scripture study? Somehow, something spiritual, uh, social, emotional, especially at our age. I don't think we get enough of this. We need to be with each other. So kudos to you guys that have made the effort because it takes effort to get out. <laughs> it takes effort to get showered and effort to get dressed and all of that. Uh, we need to to text or call a friend. If you can get out of the house, get out of the house, serve somebody physical, some kind of exercise. I think I think elder questers on the whole are, are on the top of the game because you're keeping yourself alive. You're keeping yourself active. And so kudos for you. Uh, good sleep, so important at our age. It's hard to do, but, but it's worth it. Um, and Gwen, do you want to tell them what happened with you as far as sleeping? You learned something yesterday and you said it's helping a little bit. Um, just... One time doing the exercises that you helped us with for the relaxation, tensing Progressive and mother relaxing. relaxation, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I drifted off and I was not able to do that beforehand. So I'm really grateful for that because that put me to sleep. And that's all I wanted was just to go to sleep. So exactly one time only, just one time only tensing and releasing and tensing and releasing. And then... Mm -hmm. And thankfully, I was tired, but right. still, it expedited the process. You I bet. Think. And there are some, uh, you can do that. Uh, there are some things you can get on the internet for that, too. A worry box, we won't spend a lot of time on it. Again, we're containing the worry in our brain, the little mouse on the treadmill. It It's overactive. We don't want that. And so you just... Whether you put it in a three by five card or whatever, you allow your brain to worry for 10 to 15 minutes a day. And that is it. Anytime between 6 a.m. and 4 p.m. After 4 p.m., then you'll dream about it. You don't want that. So 10 to 15 minutes, you jot it down on a piece of paper, put it on your cards. What is the problem that my brain is thinking of? What are my positive solutions? And then you put it away. Then if I choose eight o'clock in the morning, the next day at eight o'clock, I'll go, I'll look at what I have that's a problem. And remember what you do is take one extra card or one piece of paper. If the Herman brain of yours is active and say, thinking of all these things because it's not used to a habit of being positive and being peaceful, then you bullet it down and tell Herman, I'll see you tomorrow at 8 a.m. And you put it in your worry box and then you contain. If you will do that on a consistent basis, I can, I promise you, 
I promise you, your brain will calm down. I, I know it will. It's, it happens to every single person who does the work. If you don't do the work, then you say, oh, well, that didn't work so well. Well, you didn't do your job. You know what I mean? So, so try it. It will work for you. And then I wanted to end with this today. We've got five minutes. I think we're just going to do it together. Uh, let me just... So here's our phrases, letting go of tension. We're thinking this in our mind. I'm calm and relaxed. I can smooth out my muscles letting the tension dissolve away, letting go more and more, deeper and deeper. You can say this to yourself. And so remember what we're going to do, have a few deep breaths. We're going to do five seconds of tensing and 10 seconds of releasing in these areas. And we'll start with our forehead. But first of all, we'll deep breathe in. Ready, set, go. And release. Just notice. And you can close your eyes if you want. You don't have to. They can stay open. Breathe in again. And release. Now we're going to start at the forehead, raising our eyebrows and frowning. Can you do that? Tight, 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 tight. And then release. One more time, forehead, raise. Tight and frown. You can get your neck. And release. I'm probably going to be faster on the releases, but you'll know to take 10 minute, 10 seconds when you can. Eyes, squeeze your eyes tightly shut. Tight, 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 tight. Tight as they can be. And release. Good job. I think we'll just do one each. Uh, but you can do two or three at home. Your cheeks, smile as big as you can. Tight, tight, tight. And you noticed yesterday, you know how that show, it showed you on the screen what was happening to your muscles? This is important. And release. Your face, scrunch up your nose and your lips. You're like a bunny rabbit. Good thing nobody's looking. And release. Um, your mouth and jaw. Open your mouth as wide as possible. Clench your teeth together. Oh, open it up. Open your mouth. Wow, it's a workout. And release. Neck. Tilt your head back and look up at the ceiling. And release. Now tilt your head forward and look down at the floor. You know, you could do this in an airplane, couldn't you? Yeah, everybody's sleeping. And release. Shoulders, lift up your shoulders to your ears. This is actually one of my favorite. And release. Let's do that one one more time. Shoulders up. And release. Shoulder blades, try and touch your shoulder blades. This is another really good one. It's like we're always tight there. Are you always tight there? And release. Your chest. Tense your chest, your pectoral muscles. And release. Your back. Carefully arch your back. And release. Your stomach. Tense your stomach muscles. Tight, 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 tight. We still have them, you know. And release. Lower arms. We're going to clench our fists. And 
and release. You could do that right and then left, but for the sake of time, we're doing it this way. Now we're going to flex our arms, our biceps. It would be really effective to do it either way. It would take longer, you can tell, but it would be amazing. And then release. Okay, hips and buttocks, squeeze your buttocks muscles in, 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 tight, tight, tight. Tight, squeeze. And release. Tense your thighs. And release. Time is it? It's time to exit. Uh, lower legs. Point your toes up to the sky. And release, point down. And then curl your toes under. Make the effort to curl. And release. Uh, any any comments on that, even though we've been very a little bit more than we were yesterday, but yes. Do you, did you know what um do you know what Lamaze is? Yes. I said that yesterday. Okay. So when you know I was young and I was gonna have a baby, we went to Lamaze classes and they're using a bunch of these different things. Visualizations. They said you could maybe you could take a poster to the hospital so that you could look at the poster or the picture that you like and mm -hmm. relaxing different parts. Uh -huh. We uh, so this sounds familiar because it reminds me of that. Oh, perfect! Thank you. I also had a, another thought that um, about how we spend our time, what we spend our time thinking about each and every day, and wondering if, if you had a meter at the end of the day, you say, "How much time did I spend fussing about?" Well, you you're saying to limit it, but I would I just had this idea that what if at the end of the day you can say, "Oh, I spent forty five minutes." being mad about that. And I spent 15 or 20 minutes. Oh, I got a letter in the mail that made me happy for 15 minutes. And at the end of the day, you could look over what you were thinking about during mm -hmm. the day and mm -hmm. kind of decide like, is, is that how I wanted to spend my thinking time? A perfect, perfect. I agree. Yeah. Yes. You can, you can limit it, but it would be interesting, a good experiment for you to say, how am I using my time? Or another way is, um, how am I wasting my time? <laughs> we get distracted, don't we? At this stage of the game, we get distracted with a lot of different things. And so you have the choice to put into your day what you want to put into your day. And my, my hope is that we're going to have a lot more positive, a lot more grateful, a lot more being in the present moment and having that energy and, and having what you want. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, next week, we're going to be, I don't know if I put this on, we'll be, oh, I, I will show you this one more time. We have now gone through not just the volcano part and what it does, we have gone into the positive coping skills that you can use to take care of yourself. Mindfulness, balancing your life, the grounding exercises, and the self-soothing techniques. And then next week, we will be talking about panic attacks and what we can do to help them or to help a friend. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. As you can guess, this is, a, for lack of a better term, taking a drink of water from a fire hydrant. <laughs> a lot of information coming. But you get, we have to remember, we have handouts that with uh, from Janice, which has been very helpful. Again, take this, make it work for you. Thank you so much for your morning. Have a great afternoon. We will see you tomorrow with The World and Me.